In an era where trust is paramount, especially concerning our hard-earned money, a shocking revelation has come to light. Not one, not two, but seven major banks may no longer be as trustworthy as we once believed. Let's uncover the reasons behind the dwindling trust in these financial giants. Number seven, Key Corp. What will you do if your most trustworthy bank continuously tries to mislead you? According to a shareholder lawsuit, Key Corp misled investors regarding subsidiary Key Bank's liquidity for over three years, leading to the stock's greatest decline since the 2008 financial crisis. According to the complaint submitted to the US District Court for the Northern District of Ohio, Key Bank's share price dropped after it lowered its estimates for 2023's net interest income. Additionally, the sell-off eventually increased as liquidity concerns spread throughout the banking industry due to Silicon Valley's bank's decline. The bank revised its revenue outlook on March 6 from a 6% to a 9% range down to just 1% to 4%, attributing to reduced projection for net interest income to deposit beta and financing costs. So what do you think of their fraudulent activity? Number 6. Car. Shareholders have filed a lawsuit against Comerica Chairman and CEO Kurt Framer and Chief Financial Officer James Herzog because the executives have misled investors regarding the Dallas-based company's management of a Treasury Department program. A lawsuit asserted that Farmer, Herzog and the $90.8 billion company violated federal securities laws by failing to disclose that Comerica had been broken its contract to manage Direct Express. It was a treasury program that distributes federal buzzards on proper cards of Melanin's Americans without bank accounts, which was filed to the US District Court for the Central District of California. Recently, there was a sharp decline in bank stock prices, driven primarily by smaller institutions with high exposure to uninsured deposits, and commercial institutions like Western Alliance Bank, PacWeck, Birth Corp America, Comerica, and Zions Bank. Even though major positives for Comerica include reasonable loan growth, improving NII, enough liquidity and sustainable capital distributions, cost increases will probably both restrain bottom line growth. Comerica executives now predict an even greater decrease in deposits for the entire year of 2023, but the rate of outflows is reducing and they are hopeful that some deposits may return. During the Dallas-based company's second quarter results call, officials stated that average deposits are anticipated to decline 14% to 15% from last year. Hence, this decline is more than 12% to 14% projected in April and 9% to 10% projected in March. Number 5. Sandy Spring Bank Corp. Sandy Spring, like any other banking in the world industry, is facing several challenges in 2023 as a result of the Fed's tightening of monetary policy. Additionally, this bank has an A valuation grade on Seeking Alpha, indicating a significant undervaluation. Additionally, it delivers good shareholder returns with a dividend yield of 5.57%. A bank must be able to borrow money at reasonable interest rates. Unless the bank lends to greater interest rates, it will probably not be able to maintain high profitability if funds are too expensive. The position is stable as long as the yield on assets increases more than the cost of financing. But Q2 2023 indicates that this is not the case for Sandy Springs. Additionally, the financial structure is fairly stiff due to the loan to deposit ratio, which is 103.75%, which means that the value of loans provided surpasses the deposits on the balance sheet. Additionally, as we just saw, deposits are becoming more expensive and declining, which could cause this ratio to rise even further. Could you spot any other reason for not trusting the bank? Number four, Bank of Hawaii. The failure of three regional banks earlier this year has significantly impacted the Bank of Hawaii. The Honolulu-based lenders market capitalization dropped 48% of its value in 2023, a far greater decline than its regional banking peer group. The reason lies in worries about the financial contagion spread in the US banking system. The risks associated include its significant bond portfolio losses, large percentage of uninsured deposits, and above average concentration of commercial real estate loans. Analysts frequently use these characteristics as risk variables in stock screeners to determine which banks are more susceptible to new regional banking market instability. Additionally, it is projected that uninsured bank deposits total $10.7 billion, or 52% of all deposits. Comparing this percentage to several regional US banks on the mainland raises worries about the possibility of deposit flight. 
Although the percentage of uninsured deposits is not particularly high in the context of Hawaii's banking industry, it is slightly larger rival First Hawaiian estimates that 50% of its deposits exceed FDIC insurance limitations. So what do you think it is? Is it safe to be part of the Hawaiian bank? Number three, Home Street. The parent company of Home Street Bank, a major provider of business and mortgage financing in the Western US, is called Home Street. It was a decent industry to be in and one that in regular circumstances, we judge only on management effectiveness. However, the current environment for banking stocks is unusual. The Home Street results were not good. The revenue missed by around 5% or around $3 million on roughly $60 million for EPS of $0.27, a $0.13 shortfall. It follows that there is also something more going on here. It is equally evident that the situation at First Republic Bank is the issue. So what occurs if depositors begin to lose faith? Additionally, we will experience a bank run if the deposit base decides to leave. So does this mean that the bank is going to collapse? Of course not. As controversies are around, staying away from the bank is better. Number two, Ally Financial. Ally shares fell from $30 to $25 in March. The decline in the share price was merely unintended collateral damage. Unlike Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, which constantly overinvested in government bonds and cryptocurrencies, Ally Financial did not. Additionally, by increasing its provision for loan losses from $1 billion in 2014 to $3.7 billion in 2022, Ally Financial has strengthened its defenses. Additionally, the business strategy of the bank has expanded over time. Its dependence on auto loans dropped between 2014 and 2022, as the company's other business sectors expanded 26%. Ally Financial is in a strong capital position, while other banks might have trouble surviving. Are you ready to be with the bank in these difficult times? Share your thoughts in the comments. Number 1. Silvergate Silvergate, a leader with the banker concentration of cryptocurrencies, said it is closing its doors and liquidating the bank after being severely damaged financially by the upheaval of digital assets. The bank said, in light of recent industry and regulatory developments, Silvergate believes that an orderly wind down of bank operations and a voluntary liquidation of the bank is the best path forward. Silvergate's failure is a rare instance of crypto's volatility seeping into the traditional banking sector. Despite being a conventional, federally insured institution, the bank established itself as a point of entry into the world of digital assets. However, according to Dave Weisberger, CEO of algorithmic trading platform CoinRoots, there doesn't seem to be much of a chance that the upheaval at Silvergate would affect other institutions shortly. The market is now only worth roughly $1 trillion, down from a $3 trillion valuation. If you found value in today's breakdown, please give this video a thumbs up. In the comment section below, we'd love to hear your personal experiences and opinions about these banks. Remember, your perspective enriches our community. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop with our latest investigations and insights. Until next time, stay savvy and stay safe.